recap of stories that made headlines during the week. I'm Teniola Shiboale. The headlines. Leadership of the Senate meets with service chiefs over current security situation in the country. Senator Ike Kurimadu and his wife Beatrice to remain in custody till October 31st, a central criminal court in London adjourns trial. The Kauai Bomb State High Court sentences Uduak Akpan to death by hanging for the murder of Inu Bong Morin. Plus, President Joe Biden confirms killing of leader of Al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, in a drone strike in Afghanistan. That's News Round in view. We begin News Round with the meeting between the Senate leadership and service chiefs, as well as heads of security agencies in the nation's capital, Abuja. The meeting, which was held behind closed door at the National Assembly complex, looked at the current security situation in the country and reviewed strategies and solutions. Shortly before the commencement of the meeting, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, raised his concerns about the security threats posed by insurgents, a situation he says is frightening. <laughs> It's exactly one week since opposition lawmakers in the Senate walked out of plenary and gave President Buhari a six-week ultimatum to stem the tides of insecurity in Nigeria or face impeachment. We will give the president an ultimatum. The ultimatum reverberated across the country and was echoed by opposition lawmakers in the House of Representatives. While the countdown to the expiration of the six-week ultimatum rolls by, in the meantime, the Senate leadership is holding a crucial meeting with the service chiefs and heads of security and intelligence agencies over the worsening security situation in the country. Investments in the security of life and property in Nigeria. Setting the tone for the meeting, the Senate president says the security crisis in Nigeria has lingered for too long and appears to be worsening, despite the National Assembly providing support to the executive to tackle the situation. This current present position where we are is most frightening because it's like there's nowhere to hide or nowhere to go. He further laments that the spate of insecurity has badly affected the economy. We have problem with our economy to some extent because of security. No foreign direct investments or not as much as we would ordinarily attract to our country. The level of oil theft is of industrial scale today. In his response, the chief of defense staff says the military is leaving no stone unturned in addressing the imbalances in the country's security. Quite a lot has happened, quite a lot has been done, quite a lot is being done to ensure that we improve on the security setting across the country. The Senate leadership and the service chiefs thereafter continued a meeting behind closed doors, which lasted for nearly five hours. However, none of the parties spoke to journalists after the private discussions. Linda Kibi, Channels Television News. Still on security matters, which dominated the meeting of the Federal Executive Council, where the government approved the sum of 2.68 billion naira as part of efforts to beef up security in the nation's capital. The Minister of the FCT, Mr. Mohamed Bello, told State House correspondents after the council meeting that 1.8 billion naira of the sum was approved to procure utility vehicles, security gadgets, and accessories to advance support towards security agencies within the territory. The federal government also defended the donation of vehicles worth over a billion naira to Niger Republic.
The Federal Executive Council, chaired by the President, Mohamed Buhari, hosts additional personalities this week. Three new permanent secretaries, representing Adamawa, Akwaibom, and Sokoto states, are sworn in by the President before the Council meeting, continued behind closed doors. Nearly five hours after, the meeting concludes and the FCT minister gives details of an approval by the council to address the spate of insecurity in the nation's capital. The sum of 2.68 billion naira was approved to procure utility vehicles, security gadgets and accessories. By the same token, the information minister also reacted to the news of an attack on the assistant inspector general of police zone 12. His orderly died in the attack. What I know is that bandits would always want to make this kind of spectacular, you know, attack, you know, just to score, you know, a psychological point. But I know that uh, the, the government is taking the issue of security very seriously. Again, I also want to take the opportunity to please let us all realize that security is everybody's business. And please, information is key. And don't leave the issue of security to the government alone. In a question and answer session, an approval made by the president in February 2022 for the purchase of security vehicles for Niger Republic, amounting to 1.4 billion naira, is also raised, for which the finance minister gives affirmation. Over time, Nigeria has had to support its neighbors, especially immediate neighbors, to enhance their capacity to secure their countries as it relates to us. Uh, this is not the first time that Nigeria has uh, supported uh, Niger based on the request of their presidents and such requests are approved and the interventions are provided. The minister is not oblivious about the controversy that has brewed on account of the approval. Nigerians have a right to ask questions, but also the president has a responsibility to make an assessment of what is in the best interest of the country, and I, I cannot question that uh, decision myself. I have said that this is not the first time that Nigeria as a country has provided intervention to our neighbors following an assessment that it is in the best interest of Nigeria to do so. In spite of the insecurity, the information minister is quick to reassure that the 2023 elections would be conducted unhindered and as scheduled. I can assure you there will be elections because the federal government would do everything possible, not just to measure this election, but to secure the country. I'm sure you you heard yesterday from the president that the commanders have been given everything they need and they've been given all the powers they need to bring this insurgency and this banditry to an end. He assures that the service chiefs are doing their best to curb the nation's insecurity challenge. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Away from security matters, the price of premium motor spirit is yet to be deregulated. Despite the official launch of the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited as a commercial entity in line with the provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act, this clarification was made by the Minister of Senate of State for Petroleum Resources, Mr. Timipre Silva, at the beginning of an engagement with stakeholders on the new regulations for the oil and gas sector in Abuja. Received significant feedback. A year after its creation, the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority is meeting with players in the oil and gas sector over the guidelines that govern the midstream and downstream subsectors. The controller of Nigeria. The chief executive of the agency is optimistic that the deliberations on the new regulations, which is a product of the Petroleum Industry Act, will be exhaustive at this session. Section 216 of the PIA mandates the authority to consult, to consult with all stakeholders prior to finalizing any regulations or amendment of regulations. However, we do not consider this as an obligation or box-ticking exercise, as continuous engagement with our stakeholders has always been engaged, uh, has always been employed to enable their business is at the core of our regulatory philosophy. To this end, 
The authority provides avenues for our industry partners to engage with us on regulatory and operational issues. They are also here to discuss several issues in the sector, including gas pricing, environmental remediation, gas infrastructure, among others. The government expects participants to come up with a blueprint of operations. This administration understands the need to have an all-encompassing, all-encompassing, well-thought-out and unambiguous regulatory instrument that are painstakingly developed to meet and to meet present and future aspirations of government. This is required to attract much-needed investments and create opportunities in the sector. Nevertheless, one issue that requires urgent attention is the variation in the price of premium motor spirit, also known as petrol, as government maintains that there is no increase in the price of the product. A lot is going on, and uh, as of yesterday, I noticed myself that the queues in Abuja are going on. I don't know whether you are seeing more queues, but I think a lot is being done to ensure that the queues are, uh, are, are dissipated, yes. Definitely, these legislations will make it easier for them to understand, so that we can actually understand ourselves the operators and the, the regulators will understand better what their roles are. I can tell you authoritatively we have not deregulated. Uh, the government is subsidizing. If there are increases in the price, it is not from the government. It's probably from the marketers. But of course, the, I will talk to the authority chief executive to ensure that uh, uh, they actually regulate the prices. But this is not from the government. We have not deregulated. I don't know about monitoring exercises, but I know that the, the uh, the authority is fully on their job and uh, the, 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 uh, the queues will be dissipated very, very soon. For the next three years, players in the nation's oil and gas sector are expected to midwife a final regulatory instrument that will govern the operations in the light of the Petroleum Industry Act. To the United Kingdom now, where former Deputy President of the Senate, Ike Kurimadu, is to remain in custody till October the 31st, following the adjournment of the case against him and his wife by a court in the UK. Both Ikuri Madu and his wife Beatrice appeared at the Central Criminal Court London in continuation of the hearing of the charges on organ harvesting. A third individual, Obina Ubeta, who is a practicing medical doctor in London, also appeared alongside them. Well, this deeply complex case involving the former Deputy Senate President uh, did resume today at the Central Criminal Court, also known as the Old Bailey. Uh, the Senator, alongside a third individual who was arrested uh, by Metropolitan Police a couple of weeks ago, appeared in front of a judge uh, via video link while his wife Beatrice um, appeared in the dock. You'll remember that she was granted bail under very stringent conditions last week. And now, because of the complex Complexities. It's worth uh, just updating us on how we got here. Uh, the case began on the 5th of May this year, but didn't become known to the public until the 21st of June, uh, when the senator and his wife were arrested on their way back into the United Kingdom at Heathrow Airport uh, from a trip to Turkey. And now there have been lots of twists and turns on the way. I think the most notable uh, twist is that uh, this alleged victim is not a minor. Um, he is, in fact, 21 years old, and this information came to light uh, following um, an intervention from the Nigerian federal government. Um, and another twist is that uh, this 50-year-old uh, doctor, Obina Obeta, uh, from Southwark in South London, was also arrested uh, by the Metropolitan uh, Police um, on charges for conspiracy to traffic a child for the purpose of organ harvesting. And now, as to be expected, the public gallery uh, was absolutely packed. However, I didn't see uh, the two adult children who have been in attendance at previous um, hearings. Now, there is one human rights organization called the Civil Rights Realization and Advancement Network, um, who has said that uh, Ekwara case in the UK constituted a grave assault on the 1961 
one Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, as it failed to follow international standards and due procedures for trials of officials having diplomatic immunity. And now it has been revealed that whilst uh, Mr. Ekweramadu was traveling into the United Kingdom, that he was bearing a diplomatic passport, which has led many people to ask why indeed he hasn't been placed on those same bail conditions as his wife Beatrice. No bail application was made on behalf of the senator, so we're not expecting to see them to appear in court until the 31st of October, with a trial potentially set for next year. Juliana Olayinka, reporting for Channels TV News in London. When News Round returns in just a moment, court sentences Uduak Aplan to death by hanging for the murder of Inuubon Umarin. Thanks for staying with us. In a bid to secure the safety of Nigerians who seek opportunities outside the shores of the country, the federal government is empowering the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, to control and regulate travel agents and tour operators. Well, this is according to the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, who was represented by his Chief of Staff at an event to mark the 2022 World Day Against Human Trafficking in Abuja. Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark the 2022 World Human Trafficking Day, which was originally marked on Saturday, July 30. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, is holding this event to raise awareness on the plight of human trafficking victims and to promote as well as protect their rights. Conversation here centers on the strategies that should be adopted to address the menace. The agency has set up a cybercrime task team that is dedica dedicated to tackle online crimes. In the same vein, we conduct joint investigations with Interpol's National Center Bureau in Nigeria. While signing agreements with other countries within Africa to combat this crime, the federal government has also empowered NAPTIP to regulate travel agents. In order to ensure the safety of Nigerians, especially those genuinely seeking labor opportunities outside the country, the federal government standard procedure for international recruitment and NAPTIP's trafficking in persons control of activities of organizations and centers regulation of 2019. Empower NAPTIP to regulate, control, and issue clearance certificates to travel agents, tour operators, and intending travelers for educational excursion, recruitment of labor, sporting activities, cultural and musical excursion or competitions. The U.S. government has also applauded the Nigerian government for making some progress in ending human trafficking. You may have heard of the announcement of the 2022 U.S. government trafficking in persons report. Nigeria maintained its status at Tier 2 and made excellent progress in addressing recommendations from previous years. NAPTIP and their partners deserve a round of applause for all their hard work at addressing these long-standing and difficult issues. We've witnessed more community engagement regarding these challenges among civil society, law enforcement, and the media, which truly is required in a national response. NAPTIP continues to urge Nigerians to look out for red flags and ask questions whenever juicy overseas offers are made. And finally, justice is served in the case of the murder of Ms. Iniwu Bongo Morin, a graduate of philosophy from the University of Rio. A high court sitting in Akwaibom State found 20-year-old Uduak Apan guilty of Mrs. Uh, Ms. Moran's murder and sentenced him to death by hanging. He was also sentenced to life imprisonment on the second count of rape. The court, however, discharged and acquitted the second accused person, Apan's father and sister, for lack of compelling evidence to establish their culpability. This tragic incident began in April 2021, when Ms. Inyobongo Morin, a graduate of philosophy from the University of Uyo, attended what turned out to be a fake job interview in Uyo, the Akwaibom state capital. 
The victim's friend had said she had heard her scream for help when she established contact with her on the phone. As a result, a virtual search party deployed by Nigerians with a Twitter hashtag Find Inumoren to locate her went viral. The events led to widespread outrage. The man who raped and murdered her, Mr. Udwak Frank Akwen, was later caught, and after nine months of trial with his co-accused, including his father and sister, it's judgment day, and this crowd outside who couldn't get into the courtroom wait anxiously for the outcome. And soon the verdict is in. Mr. Udwak Frank Akwen has been found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. The convict attempted to escape after the sentence. The first accused person has been convicted, uh, found guilty of murder and found guilty of rape. Uh, in respect of uh, murder, he had been sentenced to death and he will be hung by the neck until he be dead. In respect of uh, rape, he has been sentenced to life imprisonment. And those are the current situation of the law in Nigeria. And we thank the court for doing that. The trial started on the 4th of November and ended on the 4th of, and uh, judgment came on the 4th of August. It's simply brilliant and we thank the court for that. The victim's siblings welcome the judgment. God was meant to serve for common people. And by the grace of God, what you have seen today, it makes us have that boldness that we still have a good, uh, good government today. We are very happy. I am happy. My family is happy. My sister there in the grave is very happy that at the end of the day, she has found justice. The defense lawyer also comments on the outcome of the case. If you followed up the judgment, you will know that the court have done justice to the case. Justice in the sense that those that are supposed to be convicted or the person that is supposed to be convicted was convicted and the other two defendants that were not supposed to be convicted, they were discharged and acquitted accordingly. So that is the justice of the case. Meanwhile, the convict's father, Frank Akwen, and sister, Basi Awen Akwen, were discharged and acquitted by the court. The verdict should hopefully deter others contemplating such heinous crime to have a rethink. And in Plasio State, eight members of a family have been killed and two others injured in an attack by suspected herdsmen in Danda Chugi of Josh South local government area of the state. It was gathered that the attackers came into the victim's compound at night and started shooting sporadically, leading to the death of three adults and five children. However, the attack is said to be a reprisal following the killing of a Fulani boy by yet to be identified individuals in the area. Ransacked home is sad evidence of the banditry attack on the family of Pam Giang of Dandi Chedwi village of Jos South local government area. Twenty-four hours later, relatives and extended family members gather in groups, wearing long faces, discussing the bitter experience. It's one attack too many, as eight members of the Pam Giang family were brutally murdered by the bandits. Eyewitness account reports that the killers of the Pam Giang family members are herdsmen who unleashed terror on the family, with only two members of the family surviving with serious injuries, while eight of them died. A lawmaker representing the village in the National Assembly could not believe the level of destruction in the overnight attack. Intelligence number one. There was notice that these people will likely attack this community. Number two, movements were seen that they were leaving the area so that the community will be vulnerable and even if any attack will happen, there will be collateral damage from their own side. That's intelligence number two. Nothing happened. 
people are sleeping and uh, they will be attacked to an extent that an eight year, uh, an eight month child's hand was amputated, barbaric, and you call these people that you should still stay within the same community with them. That if, even in the ancient war, people that attack some communities usually leave the little one for him to come and tell the story. And what do you tell, what do you call this? It's cleansing. I want to clear the entire community so that they will come and take it over tomorrow. But that won't happen. Enough of this nonsense is enough. The constitution has already given everybody the right to defend itself. Who will defend them again? We have told them to be peaceful. Defend yourself according to the law. They did not go out to attack anybody, but they came and they were attacked. Look at them. What do you want to tell them? What do you want to tell them? What do you want to tell them? For the state government, this is a callous attack that will no longer be condoned. In a statement, the government appeals for calm, directing security forces to apprehend the perpetrators of the act and bring them to book. OEN News Round with the confirmation by the U.S. President of the killing of the leader of Al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, in a drone strike in Afghanistan. President Joe Biden says the Al-Qaeda leader was killed in a counter-terrorism operation carried out by the CIA in the Afghan capital of Kabul last weekend. In my direction, the United States successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan, that killed the Emir of Al-Qaeda, Iman al-Zawiri. Now, justice has been delivered, and this terrorist leader is no more. That no matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. And that's news round this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tenio Lashibo Ale. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.